Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. We begin our show this time with a brand new car caught up in the drama of a hasty marriage of two car companies. The car is this Renault now to be called Eagle Premier. The design began in France, was vastly changed by American Motors here, and is among the many AMC assets now owned by Chrysler. You know, most reports call AMC's Jeep division the biggest prize of the merger with Chrysler, but future opinion may focus on this Premier. This Taurus class design and its new Canadian assembly plant are as modern as any in the world. The questions now, just how good is the Premier, and what is Chrysler planning to do with it? Let's begin searching for answers by admiring the handsome Jujaro pinned lines of the 1988 Eagle Premier. It's available in two trim levels, a well-appointed LX and sportier ES model. Jujaro passed on the Ford Taurus aero look in favor of a more traditional European design. The Premier favors the Audi 5000, so it's handsome without looking dated. By refusing to blindly follow the Coke bottle styling theme, the Eagle Premier should attract the large segment of buyers that don't like the totally rounded look. Our only suggestion might have been a less upright grille. Yet the Premier's use of semi-flush glass and careful detailing keeps wind resistance low. Moving inside, you quickly understand why the Premier is classified by the government as a large car. Room is generous in all dimensions and beats the Taurus up front. The ES has comfortable front bucket seats with tilting backrest and power adjustment is optional. Our only driving position complaint involves the gas and brake pedals. They're too close together for safety. Bucket seat fans also get a large center console to augment the Premier's deep glove box. Plus, there's even a Chrysler-style cup holder for your morning coffee. The LX comes standard with a supportive three-passenger split bench seat that can also include power adjust. Many LS owners will also no doubt opt for the Premier's digital instrument package, which we found somewhat hard to read at a glance. Far better is the standard white-on-black analog readouts. Our ES also included an optional tack and oil pressure gauge. Gauges can be flanked by a trouble maintenance monitor on the left and a multifunction trip computer on the right. Overall, the U.S.-designed interior of the Premier has many unique features. We like the fact that when you adjust the steering column, attached pods with light wiper and climate controls move with it. Unfortunately, most of the controls cannot be operated without moving a hand from the wheel. Airflow from the climate control system is excellent. However, you do have to punch through a range of options to get to your choice. Its detached readout is up on the instrument pod. Initially, all automatic premieres will come with a column-mounted shift lever. Its odd shape is dictated by the tilt steering wheel and control pods. Just about everything we've noted about the great front interior space is also true about the rear. Doors are large and access is easy. But it was surprising to find a new family sedan without rear shoulder belts. The premier also has the large trunk space demanded by family car buyers. It's wide and deep with a very low liftover. Now this is all very well, but cars are built to be driven. So we took our pre-production ES to our test track to see what it would do. Frankly, after the lackluster performance of past US Renault products, we weren't expecting much. So we were pleasantly surprised with the Eagle Premier's good zero to 60 time of 11.7 seconds. It also accomplished the quarter mile run in 18.5 seconds at 76 miles per hour. The ability to do this comes from a fuel injected three liter overhead cam V6. It's from the same engine family as the one powering our long-term Peugeot 505 STX. Here it produces 150 horsepower and 171 pound-feet of torque. While the V6 is standard on the ES grade cars, the base engine on the LX is Jeep Strong 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder. Transmission choices begin with a four-speed manual with a five-speed due later. There is naturally an optional four-speed automatic, which is the only transmission available on the V6. Premier handling is better than you might expect, too. While there is plenty of plow and body rolling corners, the Premier's characteristics are more German than French. 
The power steering is well boosted, yet gives plenty of feedback. Even so, our Premier ES was a handful in emergency maneuver. It might have been worse were it not for the 20% stiffer springs on the ES and its sticky Goodyear Eagle GT Plus 4 tires. The LX comes standard with high mileage Michelin rubber. On the highway, the Premier is a superb long distance cruiser. Ride is smooth but without any floating sensation. EPA fuel economy ratings on the V6 are expected to be 17 city and 26 highway. So our test result of 21 seems right on target. All models come with vented disc brakes in front and drums in the rear. But we found brakes to be our single biggest disappointment with the Premier. Stopping distances were good at only 114 feet from 55. But modulation is poor and it's easy to lock up the rear wheels. We're told anti-lock is a future Premier option. And in our safety check, the Premier's absence of anti-lock along with no front passive restraints or rear shoulder belts is unfortunate. Indeed, sloppy braking performance is the top item on our list of premier misses, followed by lesser things such as poor pedal placement and fussy to operate climate controls. But this must be weighed against a long list of hits that include its handsome styling, generally clever interior design, generous passenger room, highly usable trunk, and good front drive V6 performance. As for premier competition, Ford's Taurus has better braking performance, plus a solid, well-established reputation. On the other hand, the Audi 5000S handles far better, but is much more expensive than premieres that should range in price between eleven dollars and $16,000. So, how good is the premier? Well, in our opinion, it's very good, with as much going for it as any car in its class. With a sportier two-door coupe to follow, the Premier should carve itself a respectable share of the market. American Motors' last product was one of its best. As for Chrysler, it sees a strong future for the Eagle Premier. Since the Premier's chassis is a new design, it's far more modern than any current Chrysler-designed sedan. We think there's a lot of truth to the rumors that the Premier will now be the basis for many future Chrysler products. So despite what you might read about Jeep, if the Eagle Premier and its offspring succeed, it will be the best asset acquired by Chrysler since Lee Iacocca himself.